So greetings of the dear students. Welcome to the new session of Pol P and a new chapter from the book M. Morris Mano. That is chapter number five. And today we will learn some new topics that are instruction codes, computer instructions, direct versus indirect address. सर चैप्टर नंबर फोर खत्म हो गया ऑब्जेक्टिव्स सो आफ्टर गोइंग थ्रू दिस टॉपिक यू शुड बी एबल टू डिफाइन द टर्म्स इंस्ट्रक्शन कोड एंड ऑपरेशन कोड डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन प्रोग्राम एंड इंस्ट्रक्शन अंडरस्टैंड द कांसेप्ट ऑफ स्टोर्ड प्रोग्राम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन देन कंपैरिजन बिटवीन डायरेक्ट एंड इनडायरेक्ट एड्रेसिंग विद एग्जांपल then understand the for instruction format right so introduction every different processor type has its own design that is it has different registers different buses different micro operations and machine instructions etc so modern processor is a very complex device so it contains many registers multiple arithmetic units for both integer and floating point calculations it contains the ability to pipeline several consecutive instructions to speed execution etc so for example you have listen nowadays we are using i7 processor i5 processor i3 processor so every processor is having different registers different buses and different micro operation which they are capable of performing right and they have different machine inst instruction as well so next the first definition is instruction code so an instruction code is a group of bits that instruct the computer to perform a specific operation i'm repeating again instruction code is nothing but a group of bits you have some bits and you need to club those bits for example 0 101 so group of bits that instruct the computer to perform a specific operation this is called instruction code for example we have add 1547 so this complete is acting as instruction code so here add is your opt code or operation code add 1547 complete is acting as a instruction code whereas if you write add if you are writing add or sub 15471648 so this is your operation code it is called opt code again this is your operation code and this complete thing is called instruction code right basically what is this this is a group of bits that instruct the computer to perform a specific operation so here you are performing add operation right so here you are performing subtract operation right so this complete thing is acting as a instruction code so what operation code means the operation code of an instruction is a group of bits that define operation such as add multiply shift and complement we have already discussed all these operations add subtract multiply shift and complement right so here a unique binary code is assigned to every opt code 
so add is acting as your op code right so uh, you need binary code so this is your binary code this complete thing is called instruction code So the number of bits required for the operation code of an instruction depends on the total number of operations available in the computer. Right? I'm repeating again. The number of bits required for the operation code, which is your operation code, that is add or subtract. For this, this is your operate uh, op code or operation code. The number of bits required for the operation code for this, for example, n is a number of bits of an instruction depends on the total number of operations available in the computer. For example, you have 64 distinct operations. If I am saying that your computer, your i7 machine is capable of performing a total number of 64 operations. So how you can calculate the number of bits for this operation code? You just need to take two raised to power. How you can write 64? 64 will be written as two raised to power six. 64 will be written as two raised to power six. So here six bits will be used for operation code. <laughs> I hope the concept is clear. So here, the total number of operations performed by your machine is 64. You need to write 64 to raise to power something. So this 6 is your n, your number of bit. So here, for add operation, your code will be 110010. That is 6 bit. So it will represent add any, any format. You can write any combination, right? For example, double one, double zero, one zero is for add, one one zero zero one one is for subtract. Again, in this case, your machine is capable of performing 64 operations. So two is to power six. So here you need to represent your operation code with six value, right? If I am saying that here, your machine is capable of performing a total number of 256 distinct operations. So in this case, what will be the value for n? If you can calculate 2 raised to power 8. 8. 2 raised to power 8 is equal to 256. So here, the value of n will be 8. So in this case, you need to write your operation code in 8 bits, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So this is your 8 bit code for addition, add, right? So the operation code must con consist of at least n bits for a given 2 raised to power n or less distinct operations. So next we have stored program organization. So the simplest way to organize a computer, what is the simplest way of organizing a computer is to have one processor register and instruction code format with two parts. So the simplest way for organizing a computer is you have one processor register, you have one PR, PR mean processor register and your second part is called instruction or this complete thing is called your instruction code with two parts, right? With two 
parts. So let you know what these two parts means. So the first part specifies the operation that is your op code to be performed and the second specifies an address or operand, right? What does this mean? The first part means this is your op code, that is your operation code. So this is your operand. Operand means it may be your data or it may be your address. Let you know in the data part when to call it as operand or when to call it as address. Right? So the memory address tells the memory address tells the control where to find an operand in the memory, right? So the address part will let you know that where to find the operand, that is where to find the data in the memory. So this operand is read from the memory and used as a data to be operated on together with the data in the register. So the basic computer has two components, a processor and a memory. So the memory has 4096 words in it, right? Let's suppose your memory is having 4096 words in it. So how you can calculate the address bits? You just need to write it in the power of two raised to power something, right? If you have 4096 words, how you can write 4096 words? It can be written as 2 raised to power 12. It can be written as 2 raised to power 12. So your address bits will be 12 bits. Right? Your 12 bits will be used to fetch the address. Right? So these are your total word capacity, which can store in your computer. So your computer is having 4096 words. How you can calculate the address parts? You need to represent it in the form of two raised to power something. So 4096 can be written as two raised to power 12. So here, 12 bits will be used for your address part. So each word is 16 bits long. What does this mean? This means your instruction sign. Instruction sign or the size of Data bus. Right? The first is called the size of address bus is 12 bit. Right? So, in the later part, it has been given that each word is 16 bits long. 16 bits long means your instruction size is or the size of data bus is 16 bits. Your instruction size is of 16 bits, or you can say that the size of your data bus is 16 bits, right? So this is the diagram. So here, a memory is 4096 words into 16 bits, right? 
so your memory so this is your memory size is 4096 into 16 how you can calculate first of all you need to calculate three things 4096 will be written as two base part rather it means the size of address line or address bus is 12 bits number 1 right number 2 your instruction size is 16 bit why because into 16 right the next third thing the size of data line or data bus is also 16 bits right so here the one part is called your instruction so you can say it as copy code right and the another part is called cooprint which is also called data cooprint or data right so next we have the processor register that is your ac accumulator or your instructions basically your instruction is of in the form of instruction format the operation code with address or data it may be anything right your this is your operation code or address right so here i already told you the size of the instruction is of 16 bits so you will represent it with the help of 0 to 15 16 bits a total of 16 bits which means that 0 to 15 bits a total number of 16 bits right so how many are used for address 12 so you need to write it as 0 to 11 0 to 11 will be used for address and the remaining will be used for operation code 12 13 14 15 right so operand your binary operand it will be of 16 bits let's suppose if your data will be of 16 bits so you will represent your binary operand as 0 to 15 uh let me show you this diagram with one more example if i am saying that your memory size is 202048 into 8 this is a you need to calculate the size of your address bus you need to calculate the size of your instruction right this is your second example so in this case we first of all How many words are there? Two zero four eight. A total number of words are two zero four eight. So how you can represent two zero four eight? Two raised to power eleven. So two raised to power eleven means how many bits will be used for address bus or address lines? Eleven bits. Then the size of your instruct instruction size is eight bits. how you can calculate into a so this is your size eight bits are used for instruction 
and the size of your data bus is 8 bits right so in this case the bits right i hope the concept is clear to you so let me move further so instructions under instructions we have a simple basic definition that is program a sequence of instructions a sequence of machine instructions is called a program and what does instruction means a group of bits that tell the computer to perform a specific operation a sequence of micro operation is called your instruction the instructions of a program along with any needed data are stored in memory the cpu reads the next instruction from memory and it will be placed in your instruction register remember this thing ir is basically a register which is used to store the address of next instruction from memory before moving to further so next we have instruction format a computer instruction is often divided into two parts the first is called operation code that specifies the operation for that instruction this is called op code right an address that specifies the registers and or, or location in memory to use for that operation in the basic computer since the memory contains 4096 words which is equivalent to 2 raised to power 12 we need 12 bits to specify which memory address this instruction will use so here you can see that from bit 0 to 11 these are your 12 bits which will represents the address part bit number 12 13 and 14 it will represent your operation code and the last bit that is bit number 15 is used for your addressing mode will let you know what this addressing mode means right in the later slides so i hope the concept is clear the instruction format is of 16 bits from 0 to 15 the total size is of 16 bits right because we have considered it as 4096 into 16 We have considered it as four zero nine six into sixteen. So this is the size of your instruction, and two raised to power twelve. This is the size of your address. That is why we have used the bit from zero to eleven for address part, right? And bit number twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. These bits will be used for operation code. and bit number 15 bit number 15 will be used as a i bit or we can call it as addressing mode bit it will let you know about the mode how your open or address part will be used that will be depending upon this i s bit bit number 15 so addressing modes so the address field of the instruction can represent either direct address 
or indirect address the address field of an instruction can be present either direct address or indirect address first of all the definition is for effective address the address that can be directly used without modification to access an operand for a computation type instruction is called effective address or you can say that the second definition is as the target address for a branch type instruction or one more definition is there where the operand is present that is called your effective address right for example if i write add 100 if i write add 100 so this 100 is your data uh, suppose this is your effective address this 100 is your effective address where the data is stored let's suppose the data is this is your effective address and the data value is 50 So this is called your effective address, right? So now, direct and indirect addressing of memory. If the second part of an instruction format specifies the address of an operand, the instruction is said to have a direct address. so i have shown you the example written on the white board it is of direct memory address direct it means that add 100 100 is your effective address where you will find the operand you need to locate 100 memory location and you will find 50 as a operand so here 50 is your data part it is your operand right so in in indirect address the bits in the second part of the instruction designate an address of memory word in which the address of operand is found what does this means so here in case of indirect you need to find your this is your memory this is your 100 location when you visit the 100 location you will find one more address right so at 200 location you will find your operand so in this case this 200 will be acting as your effective address this 200 will be acting as your effective address in case of indirect address when we are talking about direct address this is add 100 and this is your memory this 100 is for your effective address because here the operand is present i hope the difference is clear to you so one bit of the instruction code can be used to distinguish but mean direct and indirect address this bit is called i bit that is bit number 15 so it consists of three bit operation code a 12 bit address and an indirect address mode bit designated by i right this last line means b 
address number 11 to 12 will be used for your address. Bet number 12, 13, and 14 will be used for your operation code. And this bit number 15, which is called higher bit, which will clear you about the difference of direct memory address and indirect memory address. In case of direct memory address, its value is equal to zero. And in case of indirect memory address, its value is equal to one. Right? If the value is written in your instruction is one, it means that the address given is indirect address. And you need to refer your memory twice, two times. Right? If zero will be written over here, if zero will be written over here, it means you need to refer your memory only once. Because it is your direct address. So before moving further, So I already told you that the mode bit is zero for direct address and one for indirect address, right? So here the diagrammatic example. So this is for direct. So let me explain to you this example. So here. We have zero add zero add four fifty seven, right? So this means that this is your instruction which will be present at the memory location twenty two. So twenty two is the memory location where this complete instruction is stored, right? So this is your memory because the instruction is add and zero the value of i is equals to zero this means that you are using direct addressing right so here you need to measure for 57th memory location where you find the operand that is your data part which will be added which will be added with accumulator, which will be added with the accumulator, and right, the data part will be added with the accumulator, and the result will be stored again to the accumulator after the addition. Right. So let's suppose so here the operand is hundred and accumulator is having five hundred value. Right. So what will be the result add 457? So accumulated data will be added up with your 100. Right? Accumulated data, that is your 500, will be added up with 100. And the result is 600, which will be stored back into the accumulator again. So this is your direct address approach. Direct address approach means you need to fetch your memory only once. You need to refer your memory only single time. Right? So here your memory application is five, uh, 457. So this 457 is acting as your effective address where you find your operand. So here the operand's value is 100. 
right so this is your direct address approach how you can know that this is direct because of the value of zero so next we have the second example the second definition so here you can see that at location number 35 one add 300 is stored so this is the example of second that is indirect address so at 300 location you will again find one more address its value is 1350 at 1350 you will find your footprint so because the value of i is equals to 1 so from this you will get that you are fetching your memory indirectly right so here From here, you have one add three hundred, then three hundred location. You will find one more memory location that is one three five zero, one three five zero. This is one three five zero, and your data is two hundred. This is your open, right? And this operand will be added up with a accumulator, right? And the result will be stored back into the accumulator again, right? So again, the value of the accumulator is. Let's suppose this time the value is six hundred, right? And the operand's value is two hundred. What will be the result of this instruction? R A C plus two hundred, so six hundred plus two hundred. The result will be eight hundred, which will be stored in a computer, yes, which is your processor register. Done. so oh, this is the explanation for the instructions which we have done earlier so a direct address instruction is placed at address 22 in memory the i bit is zero so the instruction is recognized as direct address instruction because of this zero the operation code specifies an add instruction it is given to you and the address part is the binary equivalent of 457 address right so the control finds the operand in the memory at address 457 and adds it to the content of accumulator right so next we have indirect addressing of memory so the instruction in address 35 has a mode bit i is equals to 0 i is equals to 1 so this is i is equals to 1 recognized as an indirect address instruction the address part is the binary equivalent of 300 right binary equivalent of 300 the control goes to 300 to find the address of operand the address of the operand in this case is 1350 the operand found in 1350 is then added to the content of accumulator in our case the operand's value is 200 
इनडायरेक्ट एड्रेस इंस्ट्रक्शन नीड्स टू रेफरेंसेस टू मेमोरी टू फेच एंड टू प्रिंट सो हाउ दीज आर कॉल्ड टू रेफरेंसेस so this is your at 300 this is your first reference and at 1350 this is your second memory second. reference this is your first memory reference and this is your second memory reference in case of indirect if i am putting a zero over here then you will find your operand at first location that is at 300 One three five zero will be acting as your operand. Will be acting as your data in case of direct. You need not to visit your second memory address. Right? So the first reference is needed to read the address of the operand. The second reference is for the operand itself. The memory word that holds the address of the operand in an instruct indirect address instruction is used as a pointer to an array of data so you can use it as a pointer to an array of data so next topic is computer registers and common bus system very very important topic common bus system so after going through this topic you should be able to know about various basic computer registers learn why we use the concept of common bus system and you should be able to understand how data is read from and write on to the common bus system so first of all we have processor registers so a processor has many registers to hold instructions addresses data etc the processor has a register which is called program counter pc that holds the memory address of next instruction to get so program counter is a register which holds the memory address of next instruction since the memory in the basic computer only has 4096 locations so pc only needs 12 bits right because pc deals with the address part and for address part we have only 4096 locations which means 2 raised to power 12 therefore the size of the pc is of 12 bits next in our the or indirect addressing the processor needs to keep track of what locations in memory it is addressing the address register is used for this right so ar is a 12 bit register in the basic computer ar which holds the address part address register next when an operand is found using either direct or indirect addressing it is placed in the data register dr so the processor then uses this value as a data for its operation so this is of 16 bit your data value right because we have used 4096 into 16 bit so the size of your instruction is 16 bit and that is equivalent to your data register size so data register is basically used for holding the operand 
Next we have the basic computer has a single general purpose register called the accumulator that is AC. So the significance of the significance of a general purpose register is that it can be referred to in instructions for example load accumulator with the contents of specific memory location right store the contents of accumulator into the specified memory location for this we have lda instruction or we have sta instruction lda instruction is for loading the contents with the contents of specific memory location load accumulator lda right if you write lda 457 what does this mean lda 457 this is your memory location and you need to fetch the memory location and load the contents into the accumulator lda means load accumulator here for 57th memory location the data value is 200 right and the previous value of accumulator is 500 so after the execution of this instruction lda 457 the new value will be accumulator is equals to 200 the old value will be washed away and the new value that is 200 will be copied. Similarly, you have SPA, SPA 457. SPA means store accumulator, that is the contents of the contents of accumulator will be stored into the memory location. Right, the contents of accumulator that is 500, it will be stored at 457 location. So often a processor will need a scratch register to store intermediate results or other temporary data. In the basic computer, this is the temporary register TR. The basic computer uses a very simple model of input slash output operations. Input devices are considered to send 8 bits of character data to the processor. The processor can send 8 bits of character data to the output devices. So we have two registers which deals with input slash output. So INPR is a register which is called the input register which is of 8 bits. Right? It holds an 8 bit character button from a input device. When you press any key from your keyboard an 8 bit alphanumeric code will be sent from your input device, right? So INPR is the input register which stores 8 bits. Similarly, output register out R holds an output character, 8 bit character to be sent to an output device. So first PC, PC holds the address of next instruction. So those registers which deals with the addresses, they all are of 12 bits, right? So holds the address of instruction. AR holds the address of memory. Again is of 12 bits. Next, we have instruction register. 
which holds the instruction. It is of 16 bit. Next we have temporary register. Again, it is of 16 bit. It holds the temporary data. Next we have data register, which is of 16 bits. It holds the data, or you can say that memory operand. Next we have accumulator. Again, accumulator is of 16 bits. Accumulator is basically a processor register which is used for storing the results. Accumulator. Next we have out R. Out R is of 8 bit. That is why I have written 0 to 7. Output register 8 bit. It holds the output character. Next we have INPR, which is your input register. Again, its size is of 8 bits, which holds the input character. And your memory is of 4096 words, 16 bits per word. Right? So, any doubt 